All right, join us now is Chase Owens. He is from New Japan, and he is the crown jewel and member of the Bullet Club. He joins us here. you got a busy weekend ahead of you, Chase. What is going on, first and foremost? Uh, not much. Uh, just chilling at the house right now. Yeah, it let, uh, unwinding before a, a busy weekend like I was talking about. You're going to be part of the uh, Death Before Dishonor tapings. You're going to take on Kenny King as well as uh, the Sunday for Fighting Spirit Unleashed. You're going to uh, tag team with uh, Hangman Page against um, the uh, against SCU, uh, Christopher Daniels and Frankie Gazarian. First and foremost, like your thoughts on a busy weekend for you? All right, you know, it's just another crazy part of this, you know, this crazy lifestyle. Uh, but, uh, you know, returning to ring of honor after I think like five, six years, uh, last time I was there was Charlotte, North Carolina, where I tagged up with Michael Elgin against, uh, Caprice Coleman and Cedric Alexander. Uh, you know, and that was, again, it was five, six years ago. I've definitely grown. So this weekend, first time matchup against, Kenny King can't wait, you know, and then I've wrestled Christopher Daniels before, but uh never them together. Uh so, you know, definitely gonna be a interesting and, and fun week, I do believe. Yeah, talk about the popularity now of uh SCU and uh, Kazarian and Christopher Daniels very uh very, you know, awesome tag team out there right now and uh, you get a chance to uh, tag team with Hangman Page. Talk about that that dynamic and how you guys are going to uh, be able to uh, work as a tag team. Uh, well, you know, me and Page come from the same state. Uh, we met years ago. Uh, so I've, I've known Page the longest out of anybody on the roster. Um, you know, and I think we're pretty similar in, you know, styles and uh you know, we worked well together during the G1 tour on his nights that he wasn't in block competition where we went six and three. Uh, you know, so so I'm, I'm looking forward to teaming up with him again. So let's go first and foremost with, of course, Saturday night, you and Kenny King. That's going to be another amazing matchup, too, that, that once – you know, they showed who was going to be on the card for that. And uh, once we saw the tapings, the scheduled matches, this was very intriguing because you and Kenny King is kind of like, you know, where they talk about dream matches. This is another dream match, too, because a lot of people who have known you from your Japan get to see you on Ring of Honor TV. Talk about, you know, what we can expect between you and Kenny King. Uh, you know, I think it's going to be just what you said. Uh, you know, it's going to be an amazing match. Uh, I'm excited. Again, it's my return to Ring of Honor. Uh, hopefully it leads to more Ring of Honor things, but, you know, New Japan's first and foremost. Uh, but I'm, I'm definitely excited. You know, Kenny's been around the world, athletic, you know, uh, great in the ring. So, you know, we'll just have to see what happens. And you talk about New Japan, and you talk about, you know, your time now uh, working over there in Japan, and then you, you know, come back and forth. What was the what was the hardest transition you had to make in your eyes when you went to New Japan and you made your debut? Was it the lifestyle? Was it the culture? Was it the in-ring uh, way that they do things? What was the the first thing you noticed and one of the hardest things you had to transition to? Uh, it's a little bit of everything. Uh, you know, the the... the Figuring out how to overcome the jet lag as quick as possible is probably the hardest. Uh, but, you know, you've got to uh, transition into the, you know, the, the etiquette, uh, the lifestyle, the in-ring work. You know, my first few trips I felt weren't uh, where they needed to be because I wrestled more of this southern, you know, wrestling style. But, uh, you know, now being over there, which would be four years in October. Uh, you know, I, I feel like things are continuing to click bigger and better, you know, each time. So the transition, of course, you had, you know, like you said, the jet lag, the, you know, the flying and everything. But now you seem to uh, have become well adjusted to it. And like you said, there's bigger and better things for you. What do you think heading into 2019 for the crown jewel for Chase Owens, what is, do you think is in your future for new Japan? What do you want to do? What goals do you want to accomplish there as we head into the new year, which is crazily, you know, almost like three and a half months away, but what do you want to accomplish in 2019? You know, that, that roster is 
and I don't say this just because I'm part of it or or being biased or whatever, but uh, you know that roster I think is the best wrestling roster in the world. Uh, you know, with with guys like Kenny, you know, who was ranked number one in PWI this year. Uh, last year was Okada. Uh, you know, you got Ishii, Hiroki Goto, Young Bucks. I mean, just everybody on the roster is, uh, you know, able to pull out victories any night or, you know, or uh, just the competition, you know, and that's another reason that I feel everything's uh, clicking each time over there because, you know, wrestling, wrestling the best, how do you not become become better? Uh, but, you know, for goal sakes, you know, I hope to be able to climb up the ladder a little bit and, you know, get some title opportunities and hopefully be able to, you know, take advantage of those opportunities. Now, obviously, you said the roster is, is a very loaded roster, and, uh, you know, obviously, you know, we'd love to see you probably, uh, you know, competing uh, maybe in, in, in a G1 Climax tournament next year. Uh, that would be something awesome to see you do. Um, talk about, you know, what you've learned from certain wrestlers there, uh, in particular anyone that you've uh, kind of, you know, maybe asked for advice or maybe somebody that uh, you felt that you've learned a lot from in your time in New Japan? Uh, you know, when I, when I was first starting and then joining Bullet Club, you know, I uh, learned a lot from Fale and Tama who, you know, went through the, the dojo system and were the, the first foreigners to, to come through the actual dojo system. So, you know, they were the ones, uh, you know, teaching behind, or, you know, the the Japanese style of, of how things need to be done. So I didn't make mistakes and offend, you know, any of the Japanese office members or whatever, and, you know, and potentially uh, lose my job. Uh, but Kenny has obviously been a big help in ring, uh, you know, whether it's getting ready to tag with him or, you know, just being able to go to him for some advice on singles matches or, you know, or whatever, but, uh, you know, cause he's, he's made himself a star over there in Japan. Uh, he went over there, you know, he taught himself Japanese. He started at DDT pro, uh, you know, and he's just worked and worked and, you know, there's, he understands the, the Japanese wrestling fans more, you know, probably better than, than most people there. Uh, you know, so just being able to, sit on the bus and, and pick his brain or, you know, or in the locker room has been a tremendous help. Is it amazing? Like when you have that roster, you can get bits and pieces out of everybody and it just improves you uh, as a wrestler. You know, that's, that's crazy. And you have probably, like you said, the, the number one ranked wrestler of 2018, uh, you know, at your disposal to pick his brain. How, that's gotta be awesome for you, Chase, especially as you're, you know, advancing in your career, you know, in, in, in wrestling. Yeah, uh, you know, I don't care what people say, you know, no matter how many years you've been in the wrestling business, you know, there's always something to, uh, you know, to, to pick up from uh, somebody else that might make you a little bit better. Uh, you know, that's just, at Ricky Morton School, School of Morton at Chucky, Tennessee, you know, I, I tell those students to pick everybody's brain. Uh, and if, you know, some things might, work for you and some things might not uh but it's you know but it's never a bad idea to get every little bit of information uh that you know that you can so amazingly you were trained by ricky moore and you've been able to pick his brain and learn from him then you go to new japan and you have guys like you said like like kenny and then you know the rest of the guys with bullet club uh that that's got to be you got to feel a little bit like wow you know pinch me that i've been able to absorb all this advice from your from your beginning to now where you are currently right right you know uh starting out i never thought that's what it you know this is what it would become um you know, when I started, I started at a, a show called All Pro Wrestling, and I was I was lucky enough, uh, you know, for Ricky to shortly after take me under his wing. So he wasn't who originally started me, but he's you know who I really got my breaks from, and you know, and really when I got on the road, you know, I was seventeen, I think, uh, traveling around with this guy that you know my my parents watched, and 
uh, I'd seen tapes and knew how big of a star, uh, you know, and I never thought here I'd be wrestling for, you know, one of the biggest companies in the world. So you've mentioned Bad Luck Fale and you've mentioned uh, Tom Matanga being, you know, helpful in your beginning. And then recently you've actually, uh, you know, taken the honorary Tongan shirt and you've kind of, you know, chucked it in the garbage can. How did you feel when they, you know, you obviously said you were been trying to be the peacemaker. You kind of didn't really take size at, at the start when the whole, uh, you know, Bullet Club seemed to be uh, going haywire. But just your thoughts on, on, on them kind of taking the moniker of Bullet Club, them recruiting new members, them doing what they did to you guys the last time you guys were, you know, in California. Just just your thoughts on this whole situation uh, and, and what to expect at, you know, at Fighting Style uh, Unleashed on Sunday. And and you guys are going to bump into each other. That's, they're, you know, they're going to take on the Young Bucks. So just your thoughts on the whole situation. Uh, you know, definitely felt the trade. I mean, you know, the night before, me and Tonga Loa were at San Francisco Giants baseball game together, uh, you know, and nothing was brought up about the whole Bullet Club situation. Uh, you know, it's just, you know, it's it crazy to to feel it, you know, and never did I think that would happen. Uh, you know, it's, it, but it's just two two different ways of thinking between, you know, Kenny and Tom or Fale, you know, and uh, I guess they they did what they thought you know needed to be done. Well, I mean, obviously, they kind of feel they've been put on the back burner. They kind of feel like the OG is a Bullet Club, and you see Bullet Club branching out to, and you know, you can't blame them because you know when you're successful, you want to branch out, you want to you know be better business people. But do you think part of that is also too because they kind of felt you know left out of this kind of like expansion to the U.S. by the Bullet Club, the by Kenny, by the Young Bucks, by the Elite, and how, and how did you take it? Because obviously, you could have felt the same way. You could have felt slighted. You could have felt, hey, you know, I'm part of the Bullet Club, but I'm kind of being left behind. I mean, recently you've been a, a bigger part of, of being the elite, but just, you know, how did you keep from, you know, you know, getting those thoughts that maybe ran through Bad Luck Fale, Tama, and Tagaloa's uh, 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 mind? Uh, you know, I just think, for me, I don't get jealous, really. Uh, you know, if, if people succeed and, and they're friends or if they're part of the group, I feel like everybody succeeds. Uh, you know, so with Kenny being number one wrestler in the world, you know, maybe people will look him up and see matches with other guys or, you know, or whatever, and then become fans of us, uh, you know. But I know, you know, Tama and Fale particularly take pride in, the you know, the Japanese style because of coming through the dojo system, uh, you know, and they feel – Kenny's disrespect in the Japanese style, I guess. And, uh, you know, and just things came to a head. And for you, you know, should you run into them, uh, you know, this Sunday, uh, do you have a, a message for them? Is there something that you like to get across or are your fists going to do the talking? Uh, I think the fists will do the talking. Yeah. And there's not much, there's not much to be, to be said anymore you know yeah i mean uh that is going to be explosive so uh chase you know uh, obviously people know you you know through new japan and of course you know you can uh subscribe to them uh you know on on their website catch all his matches obviously you're going to be in the states this weekend what do you think fans uh like the casual fans that are going to tune into new japan what can they expect from chase owens because you're obviously building yourself a resume here in the states you know you, you obviously you want to be you know more into to the Ring of Honor shows, you want to be a part of them uh, even more, and maybe heading into the next year. What do pe- what should people that haven't seen the Crown Jewel Chase Owens expect when when they go pay a ticket to see him? Uh, I think you all you always expect good matches, um, you know, because no matter what the match or you know if it's a house show or pay per view or whatever, um, you know, I always give everything that I have. I don't, you know, I was taught by Ricky. Uh, you know, no matter what crowd size or, you know, what's going on that, who, you know, let's say you have a small crowd at some indie show, 
Well, those, even though there's, let's say, 50 people, those 50 people paid their hard-earned money that they worked for to come see that show. So, you know, you might not be doing the the crazier thing, but, you know, it's always given 100% to entertain those people that, you know, that did pay to come see. Obviously, you know, whether it's 50 or whether it's 10,000 people, you guys put on a show and you guys give it your best effort. Of course, Cody and the Young Bucks were able to sell out a 10,000-seat arena at All In. And I got to tell you this, Chase. I was there. I was part of the whole weekend. Our podcast was on Podcast Row. I still have Hangover, and I cannot wait. As a wrestling fan, I cannot wait for this weekend because I finally feel like wrestling is back, you know? And I feel with Ring of Honor and what New Japan is going to do in the States, I feel like wrestling is back. Talk about the boom of the industry this year I call I mean me and uh, me and my co-host the trendsetter we say that 2018 uh, was history making for the independent scene what do you think 2018 has meant for the independent wrestling business what do you think it's meant for Ring of Honor and for New Japan uh, as we you know, kind of you know close the chapter on 2018 and head into 2019 yeah uh, you know I said this just the other day in a post somewhere that because somebody was saying that wrestling was underwater right now uh, it's totally opposite. Uh, you know, wrestling is doing better business this year than it has in, you know, a, a long, long time, especially, you know, the, the indie shows or whatever, uh, you know, Cody and the Bucks doing all in. That's crazy. Uh, you know, New Japan coming to the States and people complain about certain things. You know, people complain about Joey Ryan. I don't totally agree with it, but, I don't go on and post and bash about it, you know, because there are people that, uh, are obviously that are entertained by it and that, you know, enjoy it. Uh, so that all in show, no matter what, you know, you thought about one segment, there was a segment for every single wrestling fan in the world. Uh, obviously, you know, it is like a variety. There are different flavors of ice cream. I think All In did a great job of doing it. Uh, you know, in, in Cody's time at the in the Bullet Club, and, you know, of course, he had the whole riff with Kenny, uh, you know, heading into, you know, during uh, Supercard of Honor, la- you know, uh, last WrestleMania weekend. Uh, your thoughts of Cody. What are your impressions of Cody when you, when you met him? And now if you look at his drive now, he's got a big decision coming up uh, January 1st, 2019 for him. Uh, but just your impressions of Cody and when he's what he's been able to do with the new NWA World's Heavyweight Champion. Uh, you know, Cody's ever since I met him, he's always been super nice and and super cool to me. Uh, you know, he's definitely another guy that you can learn from. I mean, he's learned from one of the greatest in the world, and you know, the American Dream, Dusty Rhodes. Uh, so you know, so everything Cody passes down, you know, is more than likely coming from Dusty Rhodes himself. Uh, you know, so, you know, that's always a good thing to have. And, of course, you know, All In leads into, you know, WrestleMania weekend. And, of course, Ring of Honor and New Japan have uh, sold out Madison Square Garden. Obviously, it's got to be a huge incentive for you next year to be part of that show, to be part of Madison Square Garden. Does that have uh, an appeal to you? Do you, is it, is the allure of wrestling at the world's most famous arena something that Chase Owens wants to uh, check off his bucket list? Oh, for sure. Uh, you know, and that's another thing, you know, for the rest of this year, uh, you know, I'm going to bust my tail and, and show that New Japan that I, you know, deserve to be on, on those cards. I mean, but just, did you ever think possible you know, again, did you ever think that this could ever be a possibility when you were starting out? I mean, did did you think that it would get that this big, the groundswell of independent wrestling and, and New Japan people being able to, you know, watch it on uh, on social media, watch it on on the website, watching on Honor Club? Did you think that this was a real possibility that Ring of Honor in Japan could, you know, head to a you know Vince McMahon's backyard, his house, and and sell it out? Uh, I didn't, but you know, I've come to to believe, you know, that, that anything is possible. Cause like I said, when I, when I started wrestling, I thought, Oh, I'll just be wrestling in my hometown. Yeah, you know, then, Oh, whoa, I'm going two hours away to Knoxville. Oh, that's cool. But I'll never leave this state. Oh, wait a minute. I'm going out of the state. Oh, that's cool. Oh, I started watching new Japan. 
man, I wish I could be there, but that'll never happen. Oh, I'm in New Japan. Uh, you know, so so everything just keeps evolving and getting bigger and bigger, you know, and I, I, now I never say nothing's impossible. He is Chase Owens. He is the crown jewel. He is a, a member of New Japan Pro Wrestling and, of course, a member of the Bullet Club. Uh, he has a huge weekend coming up, Kenny King on Saturday, and then, of course, he's going to team up with uh, fellow Bullet Club member Hangman Page, and they take on SCU, Christopher Daniels, and Frankie Kazarian. So it's going to be a great time to check out Chase Owens. If you don't, if you if, if you just know the name and you want to, you know, see him in action, this weekend is going to be a great time to uh, check out Chase Owens. You can follow him on Twitter at Real Chase Owens. Now, Chase, before we go, what do you do like right now? Right, you're unwinding. You're probably going to head to Vegas. Uh, pretty soon. What do you do to unwind when you're, you know, not on the road or you're not, you know, in Japan wrestling? What does Chase do to unwind? What does he do to relax? I'm a gamer. Uh, you know, I've just started streaming a little bit uh, on Twitch. Follow me at Crown Jewel BC. Uh, but gaming is, you know, one of my things that I like to do most. You know, so I, I try to get to the gym, you know, spend time with. Uh, my dog, my family, and game. Gaming. I saw. That's, I, how, I, I, that's how I wind down. I saw the uh, the controllers that they've got the crown jewel on them. That's pretty sweet, man. For Xbox and PlayStation, that was pretty cool, man. Yeah, definitely. Uh, you know that that comes from gaming because uh, we worked at CEO show down uh, in Daytona earlier this year, and you know, and that guy has a connection with the controller chaos guys. Uh, you know, so. If you want your own customized Chase Owens controller, PS4, Xbox, Controller Chaos, check those out. You can get the link on my Twitter, like you said, at Real Chase Owens. And uh, what is your go-to console? What's your go-to game? What, what is Chase Owens, uh, what's he playing right now? What, what's he kind of hooked on? Uh, for months now, I've been hooked on PUBG, even though it drives me crazy. But... Uh, <laughs> But yeah, it's, it's it's an addicting game, and that's pretty much what I play ninety percent of the time. Isn't it crazy too, though, uh, Chase? How like, for example, like the gaming business has boomed. You know, with such places at, at like Twitch, where you can watch. Uh, you know, it's basically gamers like you know fantasy there to to watch people do gaming. You can stream there. Uh, obviously, you know how huge gamer uh, Kenny is too. Like, are you surprised by the huge boom that it's taken the last year and a half or so? Uh, you know, it's, that's another thing. It's definitely crazy. Um, you know, now watching people. At, I'll be honest. You know, I watch a couple guys that play play PUBG and just and just watching people. You can pick up on techniques and you know and things to to help your gaming out yeah yeah, it's truly amazing man i mean uh like i said the boom of independent wrestling and and now you're able to like you know kenny's been able to do kind of like combine gaming and uh and pro wrestling so it's something right up your alley too that you can get yourself involved too as well you know he's he did that uh event in florida i believe too so i think it's something that wow like it, it was untapped and now you can see that you know the combination of uh pro wrestling and, and gaming right oh yeah for sure you know that was that ceo new japan show down in daytona was you know uh it was super fun to be a part of and you know just to be around and, and playing the games and uh you know, and then performing in front of that great crowd. Yeah, Chase, again, I uh, really want to thank you for your time. Really appreciate it because this was the debut uh, podcast interview for us on the uh, High Spot Podcast on Bodyslams.net. So really appreciate your time. Uh, wish you the best of luck, man. We'd love to talk to you down the road because obviously you are somebody that, uh, you know, 2018 uh, has been a, a good year for you, but we kind of have the impression that 2019 is going to be even greater for you, man. And we wish you the best of luck and uh, have fun in Vegas. Uh, you know, get, get the name out there, Chase. And of course, uh, you know, thank you for coming on. Appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Anytime.